The Easter story begins on Palm Sunday. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The crowd shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved their palm branches and laid their cloaks on the ground. A few days later, Jesus and his disciples were sharing the Passover meal. Jesus predicted that one of them would betray him and his disciples were shocked and saddened. Jesus broke the bread and said, This is my body, broken for you. And then he took the wine and said, This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many. Jesus said to Peter, Before the cock crows this very night, you will disown me three times. But Peter insisted, I am willing to die with you, Jesus. I will never disown you. Jesus and his disciples went out to the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked his disciples to keep watch while he prayed. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. If it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then Judas came to betray Jesus to the religious leaders. Jesus was arrested and the disciples ran away. The religious leaders put Jesus on trial before the high priest. Even though Jesus was innocent, he didn't defend himself from the false accusations made against him. When the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? Jesus answered, I am. Then they all condemned Jesus to be deserving of death and they beat him. While Jesus was on trial, Peter was in the courtyard below. Three times Peter was asked if he knew Jesus, but three times Peter denied knowing him. The cock crowed and Peter remembered what Jesus had said and he wept. Jesus was then taken to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, but the crowd shouted, crucify him and Pilate was afraid. So Pilate let Barabbas, a murderer, go free instead of Jesus. They dressed Jesus with a purple robe and a crown of thorns. Jesus was crucified on Good Friday with a thief either side of him. At midday, darkness came over the whole land for three hours. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then he breathed his last. When the Roman centurion saw how Jesus died, he said, Surely this man was a son of God. After Jesus died, his body was placed in a tomb. And a heavy stone was rolled across the entrance. Early on the morning of the third day, the women came to anoint Jesus' body, according to the Jewish custom. But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. An angel told them the good news. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I extend a very warm welcome to you all for this uh, Easter Sunday service. Apologies for the video and sound that seemed to come and go a bit there. I think you got the gist of the story anyway. Uh, this morning, we'd like to welcome Reverend Ian McKenzie to our pulpit this morning to appreciate during the service. Uh, this the service will also contain the sacrament of communion, and the communion will be uh, issued by the young church. They'll be doing the, the various elements this morning for the, for the communion. Um, there's a letter here from Bobby and Alexa Walker uh, to thank everyone who donated towards Megan and Bradley in New Zealand, the retired collection in the church here and in the bowling club. 
She received a recent email from Megan, which states, I'll quote, Wow, thank you very much for your amazing generosity. So grateful thanks to everyone who donated to Bradley's treatment. And lastly, we've got a birthday tomorrow. Aisha, where are you? <laughs> your birthday, I think. All the best. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.
at the front door. Oh. Um, so usually we say this the other way about children must be accompanied by an adult. <laughs> well, we do say that, don't we? But <laughs> uh, I think it'll all be fine, won't you? Um, so there's lots of verses, and I don't know how many I've hidden. So I can't even count them at the end. But they're all over down the stairs, and maybe even up in the pool. You might find something that guides from the other week. Yeah. And they have bigger eggs than the ones I've had, or the Easter bunnies had. Okay. <coughs> so, once we sing, go to it. <laughs> Okay. Yes, he is risen. 
That's the story of wisdom. So there we are. That's what, well, just drop the microphone. Thank you very much indeed. That's my little life. And now we have got a few pictures. Oh yes. And I want you to think, first of all, of things. Um, <laughs> things that are living or not living. What's the difference? Let's see, what's that? A caterpillar. Is that living or not living? <coughs> living, yes, it moves, it's alive. When things are alive, they move, they grow, they, they feed. Next one. Is it living or not living? Is it living or not living? Ooh, it's not living. No, I don't think a backpack is alive. No. Next one. What's that? A book. Living or not living? Not living. Keep shaking your head. Okay, that's good. And the next one. We've got. What's that? A cow. Yes. Good. And is it alive or not alive? Okay. Living things or. Is it living or not living? Yes. Living, yes, okay. Next one. Now, there's a dinosaur. We know which dinosaur it is. Tyrannosaur, this is Rex. Is it living or not living? Oh, yes, they're not very alive. Dinosaurs were huge and were alive for them. They were living things, yes. We, we dig up the, the remains of them, but dinosaurs were alive. Uh, they're not living today, that's true, but here we are. Next one. A bike. Now it can move. You know, living things can grow and move. A bike can move. Is it alive? No, of course not. Next one. Oh, there we are. A nice burger. Is it alive? No. You eat it, but you can you stay alive and eat. There's not too many. Not too many eggs. Let me see the next one. A chair. Living or not living? Not living. No, it's, it's, it's not living. Next one. Let's go through quickly. Oh, there's a nice happy one. It is living, yes. Indeed. I'm sure most folk have got them in their gardens. Uh, mine comes up to the back door if I don't put out anything to them. Please, hurry up. Next one. Crayons. Living or not living? No, not living. And the last, the last two ones. Oh, what's that? That's a rock. No, I don't think the rock's living, is it? No, not living. Next one. Oh, there's a nice one. A tree. Is a tree living? It grows, hasn't it? If you plant it, you have to see it, it will grow. And that's a lovely oak tree. Okay. Oh, what's that? A potato. Is a potato? Living or not living? Well, now, it's very interesting because a potato has eyes and, it has, and when you put a little bit of that in, it actually grows. That's your, that's your, well, so I'm afraid you're wrong. <laughs> and the last one, here we are. An egg. Well, that's a problem. That's a problematic one. Because it's fertilized. Ah. 
You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. And our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, reading verses 1 to 10, and again we're using the Good News translation. The Resurrection. After the Sabbath, the Sunday morning was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the women. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly now and tell his disciples he has been raised from dead and now he is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid, and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Amen. May God add his blessings to this reading of this holy book.
If we listen to these Easter morning words, the words read by, on Matthew's Gospel, those who discovered the empty tomb and heard that Jesus was alive, the women friends of Jesus, we can take them to heart and we can make them our prayer this week. First of all, the words were said, don't be afraid. You mustn't be afraid. So often, of course, there are events in the news, things that happen in our neighborhood, uh, things that scare us in social media. And we're afraid for our younger families. There are so many dangers out there, so many scams, bad things that people do. We read them in the news all the time. And we're afraid something for people living alone. For or those who get bad news for their health. But we remember that our Lord came through all the bad things. Of human violence. And through death itself. And so we can hand our fears over to him. So here's the prayer. Don't be afraid. <coughs> Dear God. I hand over to you those things that make me afraid. And so bring to life the parts of my faith that are squelched by fear. And then went on. The angel said, I know you're looking for Jesus. Oh, we're all searching for things in life. We search for a good job. We search for friends in life. For a partner in life. And when we look for God to guide us in the difficult days, and we can be sure that He will, we certainly search for Him when we come to die, or when we lose things and disappointments. And so we can pray this prayer <coughs> Dear God, when my soul is searching, may I know that the answer to every longing. In you. And then verse 6. He is not here. He has been risen. He has been raised. Now we need to know the power of God over everything that, that sinks into our feeling and our thinking and our actions. There is nothing impossible for God. Our God, our Creator. And we can have confidence that life is worth living. It's good to be alive. And it's good to do good things. And the love is real. And God's love is victorious. And that can give us hope, optimism for life. He has been raised. Life is for living. So live it and see how great and how beautiful living can be. Life is for letting the glory shine through, shedding its light upon all that we do. Life's more than sorrow and suffering and sin. Life is for building the kingdom within. Christ the restorer empowers us this day, living and loving the gathering way. Our world to renew and our self to make hope, healing the body, the mind and the soul. Patients talk about these words. And so we can make this prayer. Dear God, the fact that you are risen should lift up my head, should lift up my heart, should lift up my attitude, and help me to live today as if I really believe he is risen. And verse 6 says, he's risen just as he said. <coughs> Don't you say? They reminded the ladies that Jesus said he would. And when we recall Jesus' words to his disciples, we remember he told them that he would be rejected by the leaders. He told them he would be handed over to be uh, crucified, to be handed over to the governors, and to die. He also said that three days later he would rise to life. All he said came true. All was fulfilled. And all Jesus' words that we read in the Gospels 
will be fulfilled. But it has yet to be fulfilled. So we can have confidence when we read Jesus' words of promise, every one of them will come to pass. For Jesus, like God his Father, cannot lie. And verse 7, come and see, he said, said the angel, come and see the place. They were invited to see for themselves the position where Jesus' body lay in that tomb. <coughs> God knows that we're all on a journey of faith. And he comes to us just when we need him. When we cry to him to show himself to us. When we're in real problems and we don't know which way to turn to the Lord, help me. He will. I've proved it. Many here who testify it's exactly the same. Further along the faith journey, sometimes we don't want signs because we don't need them. But there are times when we do. And we know they'll guide us. And they'll reveal enough for us to trust them and take the next step. So, Jesus, you had the angels invite the women to see for themselves that you had risen. And you invite me to see and your revelations day by day. Forgive me for sometimes rushing around and forgetting to come and see. See your word. See your promises. See your love. And verse 7, I okay, went on to say, then go and tell the disciples. Go quickly. The wonder of Jesus alive is still with us. When Jesus rose, he never died in him. His presence. The wonder of the Spirit here with us. It's an open secret. A secret worth sharing. Worth telling all we come to contact. Quite simple. When people say with no evidence that Jesus came back from death. We don't know that there is anything after death. We can simply tell them how he's helped us in difficult days. We can tell them how he's answered prayers when we pray. And he's given us enough signs when we need him the most. And so a final prayer. Lord Jesus, I don't want to be a secret keeper with my faith. I want to be a bold and gracious truth proclaimer. Help me to proclaim you, your life. Amen. And so we come to share in the communion of Jesus himself invited and commanded us to do and our next day when I saw him the mantra's cross. <coughs>
we share the gifts of communion. We hear the invitation. Jesus, he was always the guest in the homes of Peter and Jack Jairus, with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Bethany, and with Simon the leper. He was always the guest. But he is at this table. He is always the host. We who wish to serve him must first be served by him. We who wish to follow him must be first found by him. And we who share his gospel must first be taught by him. This is a table of nourishment. God feeds us with his love and his life. This is the table of thanksgiving. We have so much to thank Jesus Christ for in his life, his death, his resurrection. This is the table of unity where each one of us are invited and we're all one round the one table of the Lord. So let's draw near with glad hearts and ready to share his love gifts. We hear the story of the table. What we are doing here is reenacting what Christ did. With his followers in an upstairs room, Jesus celebrated the Jewish Passover. God is happy <coughs> with ancient Israel in the meal of thanksgiving. He commanded his followers to reenact it and gave it to his disciples. He said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. And later when they eaten, he took the cup of wine and said, This cup is God's new agreement in my blood. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labor, and we set a seal of the new covenant in his body and blood. And that brings us all forgiveness, new life, and nourishes us. And so let us pray that the Lord let you do in your way. May the Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. How right and fitting it is to give you our thanks and praise for you are our great creator, the giver of life, the giver of every good gift, and you are a God of covenant grace. You are the great shepherd of the Lord. And so with the heavenly company above and the saints of God in every age, we cry out and adore you. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we thank you, Lord, for our Lord's birth at Bethlehem, for his boyhood in Nazareth, his work at the carpenter's shop, his ministry of teaching, healing, helping, serving, his awesome death upon that cross, and his glorious resurrection, and his ascension from the Mount of Olives. We thank you, Lord, we have this meal to celebrate that all that you have done for us, your people. And we do as you command. We hold these gifts and use them, share them for the speak of you. He whom the grave held for three days is held for us in this bread. He who offered the Samaritan lady life-giving water, offering us in this cup the wine of forgiveness. He who breathed on his disciples will gladly breathe on us the gracious spirit today. And so we pray for your church and all its branches spread throughout the world. Anoint them with your spirit for the task of being the body of Christ. We pray for governments and rulers that you will give them wisdom and patience and compassion as they discharge their responsibilities so that people may live in justice and peace. And we pray for people who are in distress and need, 
those affected by famine or disease, those exploited by tyranny and oppression, those devastated in violence and war. We pray for all who seek relief, healing, comfort. And we pray for our own families and friends here, that each one may learn for themselves and may each teach one another that God is good. Here, these are prayers. We offer them in the name of the Lord Jesus, who taught us now to pray together. Our Father, who <coughs> art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done upon earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us in our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory of heaven. Amen. As the Lord broke the bread then, we break it now. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body. It is for you. Then the Lord took the cup and said, This is God's new agreement, sealed by my blood, drink it from it, all of you. And remember me. Take, eat, this is the Lord's body. Take, drink, this is the Lord's blood shed for you. And be thankful.
our fellowship today and help us to receive this peace that we want to share. Peace come to your brother and sister in Christ. Peace. Brother. <laughs> Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us all this Easter time and forevermore.